In this episode, Golden and I discuss Jumanji The Next Level. Full speed ahead. Welcome to the Omega Beam number 57. I'm your host, Oren Merton, and we're approaching the end of the year, so we only have a few more episodes that we're going to do in 2019, and one of them is this really fun film, Jumanji, The Next Level. It's not quite as spoiler-filled as some, but we do go into spoilers about halfway through the episode, so if you've seen it, you're covered. If you don't care about spoilers, you're covered. But if you do, then about halfway through, we do tell you when we are going to start getting into major spoilers. So you'll know when you should stop listening, see the movie, and then keep listening. All right, let's get to it. I am here with Golden to talk about Jumanji, the next level. Though we never really talked about the first level or well, Jumanji, Welcome to the we Jungle. Had, we had just met each other at the time and... I had seen a lot of my friends had posted about the fact that the first movie was a lot of fun. So I decided to go ahead and see it. And after seeing it, I said, oh my gosh, that was that was so much fun. You, you need to come see this movie. And we went to go see it. And you, you also really enjoyed it. I did. And then we saw the trailer for the second movie. And the first trailer... It was okay. It was... It was okay. I was really like, I don't know. And then we saw a second trailer, and the second trailer looked a lot better. It looked a lot it, better. It was a lot more, left me feeling a lot more hopeful that the movie would be good. Yeah, and we're going to go pretty spoiler-free this time out, but I will um, say no. this. I, I, I kind of disagree. In order to say some of the things that I want to say about the movie... There, there, there may be spoilers. Maybe We're not go directly. Full spoiler. <laughs> no, maybe not directly. <laughs> okay. A lot of spoilers, but okay. I would still say see the movie before listening. All right, fair enough. We can start with just yeah. a first little. It's spoiler free for right now, well, what I'd want and to say, and we will let you know when to switch it off if you have not yet seen the movie. What I wanted to say is that one of the nice things about the trailer, the second trailer for the movie, and the first, but the second one in particular is that it balanced that fine line of giving you enough scenes from the movie to be entertaining and engaging and everything else, and, didn't and give yet a, it gave and away it, nothing of the plot. It didn't give away much of the plot. Yeah. And it also didn't give away a lot of the fantastic scenes that are still in the movie. Exactly. And the reason I would say it gave none of the plot away is because it didn't give up the setup as to why characters are back in the game. It didn't give up the object of the game, which is, you know, how you get through Jumanji and get out the other side. And it didn't give away the villain. I mean, it was, I think it did a great job of, of making it entertaining and engaging without really telling you about the movie. Yeah. And that's not, a, that's not an easy feat. I mean, whomever put that trailer together, they deserve a full accolades for that because they 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 walked a fine line. Well, at least and they, the second one, this, right? The, the second first one. one, right? First one just didn't didn't do what it needed to do. Yeah, and I don't know if it's because they just didn't have the same company. The company wasn't as inspired. Maybe they didn't have enough scenes finished with CGI and everything to really make the trailer they wanted to make, and that 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 trailer was the second trailer. Yeah, and you know, you went into the movie wondering. Okay, so where is Spencer? Yeah, because you you know where spoilers Bethany are is. already coming. <laughs> no, no, they're oh, no. That's no, in the right trailer now. Too. I said no. Yeah. Right now, yeah. spoiler free. Okay. Um, so you didn't need to know what happened to Spencer, right? I right. think the whole in the trailer, you know, you know that it's Alex, right? That he's back in the game with them, and Bethany being a horse was just in. You know, with Bethany's new attitude, even in the trailer, it's it's like, oh yeah, no, I got this. I'm a horse, but oh yeah, we're we're good. I'm good. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Type thing. Um, I think that it kept where the fun was from the first movie. It kept the action alive from the first movie. It kept a lot of the humor 
of the first movie. Yeah. But and then I think it also just went a lot deeper. Yeah. And I, I, along with what you had just said about maintaining the energy from the first movie and all the rest, this stands alone. If you haven't seen the first one, everything you need to know is explained in this one. But there are some great in jokes yeah. that are just going to be funnier if you saw if the you first one. If you haven't seen the first one, watch the first one. It, it, is, it is a, good, a lot it is, it is of good fun. fun. It it's is good fun. It is really just wonderful fun. Yeah. And, you know, in, in a sense, the first one, one of the themes was these guys in their own way, these the young people, the, the four young people are misfits. They're all misfits in their own way. And well, it's about them coming together. They're coming together because all four of them are so locked into their own little lives yeah. that they're not seeing the bigger picture. Right. And in playing the game, they get to see the bigger picture. So this one begins where the other one ends, talking about how now they're in the real world and they're kind of being overwhelmed by it and overwhelmed by their experiences. And they're longing for sort of the security, in a sense, of what they already know. And the movie goes from there. And it brings in older characters as well as the younger characters, characters who are not at the beginning of their journey, but kind of towards the end of their journey. And I think, you know, just as the young people come to their peace with their new places in the world, and if if nothing else, even if they don't have all the answers, it's it's they they have new energy to to face them together. I think it's great how the old people as well, towards the latter part of their journey, they also come to realize things. And it's you're never you're never too young and never too old. And like you said, it gets for for a silly fun action movie, action fantasy movie, this does have real depth and heart to it. You have you have a couple new characters, basically Danny DeVito's character is Eddie, mm -hmm. Spencer's grandfather, and you have his friend who is Milo Walker, played by Daniel uh, Danny Glover. Did I get that wrong? I may have gotten that wrong. Donald Glover? No. <laughs> no, Danny Glover. Danny Glover. You're you're right with that. Okay. So I think with this one, you have a lot of the same themes, but I think the main themes are friendship and mm -hmm. communication. And so now I'm going to start to go into spoilers. So if you do not want anything from the movie spoiled, now would be a good time to mark it down for later where to pick up after you've seen the movie. So they get into the game and you can see from the trailer that you have Danny DeVito is now Bravestone. Right. Um, his character is Bravestone. Milo Walker is now the short uh -huh. zoologist. Yeah. And Bridge is now Jack Black's character. Right. I mean, and just like, oh my gosh, this is worse. How <laughs> could this get worse? <laughs> yeah. And I think what it is is that the game knows what they need in order to get the most growth from playing it. Mm -hmm. I think that it knows who the characters should be. And right. at one point, Bridges character says, oh my gosh, you are the worst Bravestone ever. Right. <laughs> because he's not meant to be that character. Yeah, yeah. That's not really who it's supposed to be. Right. And I think that they have to like, find themselves again and appreciate what they actually have. And when Fridge eventually gets back into the character that he knows from the first time, it's, I'm, I'm home. Got to give credit to the actors. The, you know, they clearly looked like they were having a ton of fun. They probably, I know that a couple of them at least are very good friends in life. And, um, and just to make it seem like we're kind of in the jungle, the dog is just going to continue right. to bark in the background. Right. Some animal noises while we're doing the uh, podcast. 
they obviously know each other very well. They get along really well. It's a great rapport. And it's got to be really fun f- as, from an acting point of view because they each get to play multiple roles in this movie. And the, a- the actress that played Ming, she just... Aquafina. She did yeah. a really just wonderful job because she is playing Spencer. Right. You know, in this role, and she nails that. And then when she now is the Danny DeVito Eddie character, you can see that she's already she's got to scrunched up her shoulders all the time, and it's just that's constant. And yeah. she carries it through. And it's not just how she's talking, but how she's carrying herself. That yeah. is so well done. Absolutely. So the special effects are, of course, really good in the movie. The the music is is excellent. It, it, it's from a production point of view. This is a great film, and you know the acting is great. It was by yeah. the son of Lawrence Kazan, Jake Kazan. This was a Jake Kazan movie. Um, I don't know what else he's done besides the Jumanji, but he definitely has has the the eye and the knack for it because it was a it was a a really tight script. And a good film, good story, good characters. I, I really can't think of anything to complain about. No, but it's it's interesting to like look at it and say, why did Martha get to be the same character? Right. Why did, well, I already kind of said, that I think Fridge needed to appreciate everything that he already has, even more so. Right. And that's why he didn't start back in the same character. I think Martha was appreciating and really trying to step into that same role in her real life. Mm-hmm. So she was back in that character. Yeah, I think I think and you're right. You have Alex being himself again because he's where he wants to be in his life. But the others are still kind of still just I think Spencer wanted it too much. Mm-hmm. He thought that that's what he needed and he found out that it's it's not right, and it's not everything. And right. I think he needed a different character to do that. Right. And uh, going to the end slash extra, you know, post credit scene, I think they had just a glorious setup for number three. Just I, I think loved we probably it. should have put that at the beginning before we started with spoilers that people should wait for the credits. Wait, wait through the credits. But. I think it's almost a given these days with tentpole movies that everyone should hang out because you never know. Even in some of the movies where there aren't extra credit scenes these days, just the credits, the art, you know, in the credits is gorgeous and, and fun. So seeing as we're towards the end of the movie, my only thing that really kind of there that surprised me. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going I'm to hold on on that one for a moment. So when the final battle is taking place and you right. know that this seed has got something to do with it. Right. And the other character sees the seed and backs away from Bravestone's character. The villain's starting to walk away. I'm thinking, well, is he supposed to eat it? And then afterwards, I'm like, oh, okay. He saw the juice. Therefore, he knew I need to get away from that. Okay. I figured that part out. But this, so it was nice to be a surprise there. Then you have the very end. You know, you get to the very end and it's done. And I'm like, wait a minute. I think that the end piece in the first movie just for some reason gave enough time. And this one, I almost feel like I was like, wait a minute, it's already done? That was it? Yeah, I see what you're saying. And I I would agree. My one criticism is that maybe the set piece at the end, sort of the boss battle, if you were to, in, in video game terms, it wasn't quite all it could have been. Well, it was long enough. It was long enough. Um, it was exactly what it needed to be, but for some reason, it just seemed like the choreography was the, just not as. Oh as no, good. I thought the choreography was pretty good because the you know you have dance fighting, but that yeah, the, was the, awesome. The dance fighting. It, I, I was referring specifically to Spencer versus the and big I, bad. They had a lot more fun with the backpack this time. They had a lot more. F- he he really embraced. Fred really embraced that. He's like, I'm the backpack guy. 
But that's the thing, you know, it, it was it was great. And one of the reasons it was great, and this goes along with what you were saying about the characters being who they needed to be, he is the backpack guy. He he once he became that character, suddenly the backpack became this yeah, amazing it's like, tool. You need, you need ice picks? Oh, I got ice picks. <laughs> You, you need. I'm sure I got something. Let me, let me, let me. I'll pull it out of the backpack right now. And I thought that that was they stepped into some things that I really think played well, and that was yeah. some of the things. Like I said, it was just for some reason the end just seemed to come too quickly. I I felt like the final boss battle was just not. I mean, and I'm just referring to the part between Spencer and the big bad. I don't think that was choreog- choreographed, excuse me, quite as well as it could have been. Um, but again, part of it is probably because we live in an era where there's just the most crazy kung fu, amazing John Wick action scenes where people are where it's it's a dance. It really is a dance, and and this wasn't that. And so I think maybe we're spoiled in some. And, ways. and I think that. Um... The horse. I, I'm just curious. Does the horse actually get like a credit in IMDb, or is, is there actually is he is he listed in the cast? That's an interesting question because, because until this very moment, yeah. But I thought it was CG. I thought the entire horse was, was the entire horse CG. I thought the entire horse was CG. Oh, maybe maybe it was because just too many. Mouth movements a great on cue. Though. Yeah, I mean, it just seemed like if it wasn't a completely CG horse, it was a horse where they had to basically CG the head. So the question is, leading into a possibility of a third movie. Right. And they, they're not going back to Jumanji. No, they're not going back. They may not have to. Is Jumanji coming to us? I was going to say, maybe. The end. The end left it wide open. It was and in a great way, and that is interesting as well because the if it's in the real world, Spencer, you know, um, you know, M, Brit, Brittany, or Bethany, Bethany. Fridge, um, they're not going to become those avatars. No, those avatars would end up in the real world. Does that mean that Spencer at all would end up being like their guides and their assistants and helping the avatars do what they had to do in the real world? It's just ripe with possibilities. And I think the people who have written these scripts are doing, and uh, it was Jake Kasdan, I think, I think it's mostly his deal, but there were a couple script writers uh, named, not just him. So I, I think they got a handle on it. I think they really have a feel for this world and this uh you know this genre and so i'm 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 looking forward to it i hope the third uh is greenlit i'm i'm almost certain it is and uh i'm looking forward to it so i'm looking at the writing credits it's jake kasdan uh-huh. jeff pinkner and scott rosenberg based on the book jumanji by chris van alsberg yeah i i uh i i know i've heard one or two of those names i, I think i've heard both of them before i know the first one Jeff uh, Pinkner. Pinkner. I, I I know I've seen other things he's done, but I'm not looking at IMDb or anything right now, so I don't know off the top of my head. But he's definitely this is not any of their first rodeo. If you haven't seen uh, Jumanji: Welcome to the Jungle, we recommend you see that one, and then see Jumanji: The Next Level. It's absolutely a good time. It's definitely. A good time. You walk out of the movie feeling like you got something for your money. And, and I'm sure that there's got to be some time in there that you're going to be laughing. Oh, yeah, yeah. In both movies. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Golden. You're very welcome. And that's it for this episode. You can find the show notes at theomegabeam.com slash 57. If you like this episode, please leave a review in the Apple Podcasts app or Wherever you listen to podcasts, reviews help people who might be interested in this stuff to find our podcast. If you have any comments or suggestions, please drop us a line at info at theomegabeam.com. Be good to yourselves and each other, and we'll catch you next time. Next time.